guys welcome back to my channel and for those of you that don't know me I'm Kelsey for those of you who know me welcome back so it's book review time I'm really excited about this one although I will tell you guys and this is not a normal thing but I was looking over my script before I recorded because I was like okay I'm gonna look over it, I'm gonna make sure I know what I wrote. I was reading it and I have like four main things that I talk about. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna talk about the plot, I'm gonna talk about characters, I'm gonna talk about rating, and I'm gonna talk about my classroom, if I would use it in my classroom. And I was reading it and I, I did plot and character development and then it just, it disappears. But I crossed it off as done. So at some point I thought I wrote the rest of it. I did not. So... That was super fun to discover, but it's fine because I remember. So today we are going to be talking about the Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. So I read the Sundown Motel as an audiobook, so I didn't actually read it, read it. I listened to it and I did it for one of my book clubs that I've mentioned in my monthly wrap-ups, but I read this one a while ago. I've got a backlog, y'all. I'm just reading faster than I'm making videos. That being said, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this book, and so without further ado, let's jump into it. The Sundown Motel is a mystery thriller horror book and so I was really excited to read it and it's just it's really solid so I kind of want to start our discussion about it by just going over the synopsis. So the synopsis says the secrets lurking in a rundown roadside motel ensnare a young woman just as they did her aunt 35 years before in this new atmos suspense novel from the national best-selling and award-winning author of The Broken Girls. In upstate New York, 1982, every small town like Fell, New York has a place like the Sundown Motel. Some customers are from out of town, passing through on their way to someplace better. Some are locals trying to hide their secrets. Viv Delaney works as the night clerk to pay for her move to New York City, but something isn't right at the Sundown, and before long, she's determined to uncover all of the hidden secrets. So as it kind of hints at the beginning, it's talking about two different people, okay? So it focuses on Viv and Carly. Viv is Vivian Delaney and her timeline is set in 1982. And then we have her niece who comes to the same city 35 years later. And Carly is in 2017. So they're living almost it's like, it feels like you're living parallel worlds or parallel lives because they're in the same place and they're like dealing with the same hotel. Granted, Carly's is a lot more self-chosen than Viv's was. So that was really cool. I also love that it was in New York because I have family in New York and we have family in a small town in New York, not Val, but a small town. So I can kind of picture that small town mentality and overall, it was a really well-paced story. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I wanted to keep listening. I didn't want to stop. I was doing a lot of walking outside for my exercise at the time, walking and running, mostly walking so that I could focus. And I just wanted to walk and walk and walk and keep listening. So I always strike that as a really good book because I wanted to keep going. So that was really exciting and I also felt kind of like a mini investigative journalist like I was investigating with Carly so it overall really pulled me in and I was really excited to keep reading. So that's plot. Overall it, the story progresses well and um, yeah I think I think you guys would be engaged by it like I think it would pull you in. So character. We have two main characters, Viv and Carly. They're both very strong, independent women. Both have their own struggles, both have their own things that have gone on, both have their own demons within the same family, but they're different demons. And so they're very strong. There's a lot of depth 
developed for these characters. And so that's really exciting. The side characters were really well done for the most part. There was one that I did not like. I am not going to name drop him. Although I did say it was a him. Well, there's multiple hymns. I'm not gonna name drop this person, this character, this him, because I don't wanna ruin it. And I don't wanna like skew you to thinking negatively, but there was one character that I felt like when he was first introduced to the story, I was like, oh man, like, what's this guy gonna do? What's he gonna be like? And then by the end, as his story wrapped up, I was like, really? Like, you just don't seem important anymore. But they felt like the need to bring it, I don't know. It was just weird. I, I didn't like it, but maybe you guys would. I just didn't like their specific storyline. There were also some other side characters like Marnie and Alma who kind of were supporting characters. They were side characters. They weren't our focus, but they were just other strong women that really, it just kind of made the book feel like there were these strong independent women who didn't need anybody else. They didn't need help. They were going to take care of it on their own. And I thought that was awesome. Just, I don't feel like you get to see that a lot. It feels like almost all the time it's like, oh no, damsel in distress, here comes this guy. And so for there to be this girl posse group that was like, we got this, I just really liked that. There's two storylines. And in Carly's storyline, there is a romantic interest presented. I really liked this romantic interest. He was like this troubled kid who lived in the town and then went away and he'd come back and I liked it. Of course, I called it. I saw her falling for him before they really ever hinted at it. But I mean, that's just, it is what it is. It's fine. You know, every girl deserves to fall in love if she wants to. So perfection. And there were kind of two different villains. So there was like a villain in the 1982 world and then there was a villain in the 2017. And I loved the 1982 villain. I loved dealing with the spooky ghosties cause it's a horror movie or horror movie, horror book. And so there's like some spooky ghosties and there's a bad guy. And I really liked that storyline and how it all comes together. And then there was the 2017 villain, because of course it can't just be she's trying to fix this one thing or figure out stuff. There has to be a separate villain. And there was a connection, which I guess made sense because of Viv and Carly's connection that there be, you know, kind of another past present connection. Don't know what this is and I, I look like a seal. I'm sorry. But it just felt like, I don't know, it, pointless. The person didn't seem like a villain for so long that then by the time they came out as a villain, it was just like, really? Like you figured all this out on meeting this person one time and you enacted this big plot? I don't know, maybe I'm a negative Nancy, but I just was like, I don't like it. However, there were true ghosties. And if you watched my review for not review, but my wrap up for March, I read Home Before Dark and I was kind of bummed that the ghosts got explained away. So it was nice to get to read this a while back where the ghosts were ghosts. I rate this book a five out of five stars. Mainly, you know, not everything's perfect, but I had my spooky ghosties that I really wanted. I felt like there was a really strong female like empowerment movement. You know, I did kind of hesitate was like, is this really a five star read when I felt like the 2017 side, the villain just wasn't there. But I feel like the 1982 side and everything that kind of wrapped up and to even the end and how it all connected together, I just was like, mm, yeah, I'm about this. So 
I'm taking that as a positive. I did have a discussion in my book club about how I wish there was like a sequel or it went on a little bit more than it did. It almost felt like the story ended and then it jumped to the epilogue and it was like, Bo! And I was like, no, no Bo. No Bo. Go, go away. More book. But, you know, I think I feel that way about most good books. So I guess that's a testament to it being good. Like I said, five stars. Classroom application. I like to hit on this. I'm gonna be honest, it really feels like lately I'm not reading a lot of books I would use in my classroom. I, I no. Just because it really, I mean, maybe as like a student choice, if a kid was like, miss, should I read this? But really not in eighth grade. It's got some language stuff going on. And while yes, I know they watch TV and they do the things, I just don't wanna have to get a permission slip signed and all of the things. But, if I had kids that I knew were avid readers and they read these kind of books, I probably would recommend it to them because it's good. That's The Sundown Motel, guys, by Simone St. James. I really loved this book. I really encourage you guys, especially if you're like, oh, I don't want it to be too horror-y. It's really not like a super creepy horror or gory or anything like that, but it does have some like, ooh, creepy moments. So if you're looking for a book like that, I think this will be perfect. And yeah, let me know what you guys think if you've read it down in the comments, if you are going to read it, if you know any books like it that you think I should read because I'm looking for more like this book. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more book reviews and reading fun, Creative writing is on its way, hopefully by the end of the month, and some teaching strategies as soon as I can stop being mad at work long enough to actually want to do it. All of that will be coming your way soon, so if you want to see more of that, hit subscribe, and I'll be back hopefully very soon with another video. Otherwise, I'll see you guys down in the comments.